Hello and welcome to this course on how to check if a Python string contains a substring. So if you're working with text data in Python, then you might have run into a situation where you just need to confirm whether there is a certain substring present in a text. If the text is pretty long, then this might get challenging by just, you know, looking at it. Is the word secret in this long text? Kind of hard to say. But together with Python, it's actually quite quick to do that. And in this course, you'll learn how to check for a substring in a string. So this is just confirming the presence of a substring. And that's quite quick and easy. And I'll show you the most Pythonic way to do that. But in good real Python fashion, we'll dive much deeper than that. As a next point, I'm going to show you how you can generalize the check by removing case sensitivity from your string and also give you a bit of context on why that is important. Then you'll learn about a few string methods that you can use to figure out more about the substring, such as where it's located in your text and also how many of those substrings exist. Then I'll show you some more advanced ways of matching substrings using regular expressions. So situations where you might need to apply more elaborate conditions in order to find just the substring that you need and then also work with it more. And finally, you'll also take a look at how you can find a substring in a pandas data frame column. This again is going to be a different approach than the ones shown before. And that's just because you want to do things the way that pandas suggests you to do them. So there's quite a lot of topics. And after going through this course, you're going to have a good foundation on working with text data in Python and how to check for the presence of a substring, but then also how to work more with the substring if you found it. If that's something you're interested in, then stick with me and let's get over to the next lesson where we'll start with the quick takeaway of how you can confirm the presence of a substring using Python. All right, let's start by confirming the presence of a substring. And in Python, the most straightforward way of doing this is by using the in operator. And here's the syntax of how you can check for a substring in a string. You first type the substring, then you type the in operator, and then you type the string where you want to check for the substring. To show that with a concrete example, here you go. So you want to check whether toes is in tomatoes. In this case, if you would punch that into a Python REPL, then you'll see that the in operator returns a Boolean value. And that means it's either going to be true or false. And in this case, because the substring toes appears inside of the string tomatoes, you'll get true back. Okay, let's go ahead and try that out. I'm here in an IPython console, which just gives a little bit more syntax highlighting so that it's easier for you to follow along. But the functionality is going to be the same if you use just the normal Python REPL. All right, so we want to say toes in tomatoes. As you can see, Python returns true because the substring is found inside of the string. Now, if you had something else, the opposite of the substring is found would be that the substring isn't found. And in that case, Python would return false. So let's try that out with fingers in tomatoes and here you get a false. But stay here. Don't head off to make ketchup the old-fashioned way. Let's look at a use case that may be a bit more interesting, where you're checking whether a certain word appears in a longer text. So I have a text here. I will assign it to a string. This is a string made up of three sentences. The word secret appears multiple times. Note, however, that the capitalization of the word secret is different each time. One time uppercase, one time lowercase, and one time capitalized. And the word secretly also appears in the text. You'll learn more about why these slight differences matter. First, let's check for the lowercase string secret by using the in operator, just as before. And because the substring secret appears in the text, you'll get a response of true. Most commonly, you might want to use this type of check if you want to take a decision in your code, which means that you might want to use a conditional statement. So you could say if secret in text, print something, oh yeah, <laughs> one of those nice 
smiley faces can stay. And then I'll say, it's there. So now, if we execute this conditional statement, then Python is going to perform the same check it did before. It's going to check whether the substring secret is in the variable text that I defined before. So this is this, this long string. And if it's in there, then Python is going to print out is there and one of those celebrating emoji faces. And as you've seen before, the word secret appears in that text string and therefore you get this type of output here. Now, you would probably have some sort of code logic in there that maybe executes something depending on whether or not the substring is inside of the larger string. This is the most common way you're going to use a substring check in Python. The takeaway is use the in operator and it's going to return a boolean, so either true or false, depending on whether or not the substring is inside of the string. But one thing to remember with this check is that it is case sensitive. So Python really just looks for a lowercase secret here. And in the next lesson, you're going to take a look how you can generalize this a little bit to maybe also catch other capitalizations of a substring that you might be looking for in a larger string. In this lesson, you'll learn how to generalize your check by removing case sensitivity. Previously, you've worked with this text. Uh, it's just a short text that contains the word secret a couple of times in different capitalizations. And you checked for the lowercase version by saying secret in text, and Python returned true for that. This really just looked for a lowercase secret in that text. And because there is one, you got a true. Python found the substring. But you need to keep in mind that strings in Python are case sensitive. So when you write secret in lowercase equals equals secret in uppercase, then Python returns false. That's because lowercase letters and uppercase letters are different characters. So for Python, a lowercase s is distinct from an uppercase s in the same way that, for example, a lowercase s and a lowercase x are different. So even though this is the same word for us as humans, it's not the same string for the computer, which is why it returns false. Which means that if you were looking for a substring and it does occur in your text, but only with a specific capitalization, then you are going to get false back from Python, even though for you as a human, the word that you're looking for is actually in the text. For example, if I looked for secret in what I call SpongeBob case, Python is going to return false because that specific capitalization of the word secret doesn't appear in the text. So what you want to do to avoid this is just make sure that both the text and the substring have the same capitalization. So for example, the text contains the word this, and the word this here is capitalized, so it starts with an uppercase T. Now, if I were to look for this lowercase in text, then Python is going to return false. But what I can do to make sure that both the substring as well as the string that I'm searching in are lowercase is to say this, keep this one lowercase, and then say in text dot lower. So I'm calling the dot lower string method on the text string. This is going to lowercase all of the characters in there. And therefore, my check whether the substring this is inside of the lowercase version of text is going to return true. Let me show you what text.lower does. Got to print it out. As you can see, this is the same text as before, but all the words are in lowercase. So I will assign this to a new variable. And for the rest of the tutorial, we're going to continue working with this text that is all lowercase because that avoids any sort of issues that might come from just capitalization being off. And now, as long as you keep your substring also lowercase, then 
you will be able to always make sure that the word that you're looking for also exists in the string. Making sure that the capitalization of the substring and the string that you're searching in are the same is going to help to make sure that you're not accidentally not getting a match even though the word is inside of the string that you're searching in. And now that you know how you can find a substring in a string and how you can generalize the search a bit more, in the next lesson, you'll take a look how you can learn a little bit more about the substring that Python identified. In this part of the course, you'll learn more about a couple of Python string methods that you can use to learn more about the substring. I'll start off by showing you a little table that gives you an overview about what's the name of the string method, what happens if it does find a substring, and what happens if it doesn't find a substring. One that you're going to look at is string.count. And this is a way to get a count of how often does a substring appear in a string. So it, if it finds a substring, it gives you back an integer that tells you how often it is found inside of the string. And if it's never found, then it returns the integer zero. Then there's string.index. That's a way for you to locate the substring in the string. And what it does, it, it gives you back the start index of where the first occurrence of the substring is found inside of the string that you're searching in. What it does when there is no substring in the string is to raise a value error. And then there's also string.find that does the same thing as string.index in the success condition. So if it finds the substring, then it gives you back the starting index position. But if the substring isn't found, then instead of raising a value error, it returns minus one. I'll tell you more about string.index and string.find throughout this course. You may have seen string.find used to check whether a substring is in a string. I don't consider this a good way to do it, but I'll show you how to do it later on in the course so that you also can maybe see for yourself how it works and why using the in operator is a better choice. But all of these string methods have their use cases. They are useful for learning more about the substring. And now let's head back over to the REPL to try them out and learn a little more about your substring. So here you have the lowercase version of the text that we were working with. And you identified that the substring secret appears in this text. But for example, you, you don't really know how often is it in there, right? If you want to know that, then you can use dot count. You can say text lower dot count and then pass in the substring as an argument here. That would be secret. And then Python will return an integer that tells you how often did it find the substring inside of that string. You can count this manually here too. You can see that it's secret once, twice, three times, and then the fourth time might be a little surprising, but it's down here and it's part of the word secretly. Now keep in mind that for Python, any character is just a character, so the white space character doesn't really have the meaning that it has for us by delimiting a word. It's just another character. So Python looks through the string, through every character, including the white spaces, and looks if this substring appears somewhere. And also here in the word secretly, you have the substring secret. So that becomes part of the count. Now, there are some tricks that you could do. For example, if you really wanted just the word secret, you could include the white space characters in your search. And then Python is only going to find it once. And that is over here, right? And you can see already that if you really wanted to find all the words secret, <laughs> but ignore that here's a comma and here's a period and here's like two white spaces left and right and then maybe exclude this one because it has some characters after it, that gets a bit complicated here, right? So if you want to search with these sorts of conditions, then there's a better way of doing that and you'll learn about that in a couple lessons down the road. But for now, dot count can give you an information of how often is the substring really inside of the string that you're searching in. Now that you know that there's four substrings secret inside of the text lower, you might be wondering when you typed secret in text lower, which of those did Python really find? The quick answer to that is that it's the first occurrence, but let's look a little closer 
to find out a bit more information about that in the next lesson. So I've quickly mentioned at the end of the last lesson that the substring that Python finds when you just do a substring check using the in operator is the first one. So the first occurrence of the substring in your string. Now, maybe you want to know where in the string does it appear. And for that, there is a handy string method that you can use to find the index position of that first occurrence of the substring. It is aptly named dot index. So you can say text lower dot index and then pass it as an argument to substring. And then Python will return to you the index position of the first letter of the first occurrence of the substring in your string. So here you get position 59. And that means that here at position 59 is where the first occurrence of the substring secret starts inside of this text up here. Okay, so dot index gives you a way to get a bit more information about where is the substring located. It also takes optional parameters where you can give a start index and an end index. So where in the string you want to search for. So this always, if you start at the beginning, which is the default, you're always going to find the first occurrence. But if you want to start somewhere after 59, then it's going to give you the beginning position of the next one. Well, let's give it a quick spin just so that you see how that works. You can say text lower dot index, then pass it secret. And then here, I'm going to give it a different start position. I'm going to say start at 60. And if I don't define the end, then it's just going to go to the end of the string. So in this case, it's going to start searching here for the string secret. And secret is not the string secret. So the first one it's going to find is just going to be a little after that. And you will get the position 66, which is where the second occurrence of secret in that case starts in your string. And yeah, like I mentioned, you can also define the end. So if you just want to search within a specific part of your string, then it's it's kind of like a slice syntax that you can pass in here. And this can give you additional information about where inside of your string is the substring located. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you one more string method that is often a little misused for doing the substring check in Python. And I'll show you how it works and also why it's not the best way of doing that check. <laughs>